One of the most important sensor systems on board the quadcopter flight controller I'm currently developing is the Inertial Measurement Unit, or IMU. And the IMU consists of an accelerometer and gyroscope, and our drone's going to use those guys to measure its orientation, speed, and velocity. And so if we want to measure those parameters accurately and precisely, we need a good calibrated IMU. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys a general accelerometer calibration procedure I developed and show you how I calibrated my drone's accelerometer and get cool looking plots that look like this. So let's get started. Before we get into the actual accelerometer uh, calibration procedure, I think it's going to be valuable for you guys to know what the calibration model we're using looks like. Um, so the procedure I'm going to show you in a bit um, outputs nine calibration parameters three bias terms and six scale factor terms. Um, so all accelerometers, no matter their cost or grade, are going to have bias in their measurements. And we can subtract out those biases through either calibration or estimation. So if you're using an accelerometer in like an extended Kalman filter or something like that, you can actually estimate accelerometer biases and subtract them out that way. Um, or you can do them through calibration, which is what we're going to do um, in this video. And it's probably the easiest way to. Coleman filters are icky. And then the scale factor terms are going to, uh, you know, correct any scale factor errors. Um, but not only that, this calibration procedure I'm going to show you actually it corrects for non-orthogonality errors. So our accelerometer sensor, you know, it has three individual accelerometers in the X, Y, and Z directions. And ideally, those three sensors are arranged at 90 degree angles to each other or uh, orthogonal to each other. But, you know, manufacturing processes aren't perfect and we can, you're never going to get something perfectly aligned at 90 degrees. You know, this calibration procedure I'm going to show you actually corrects for those non-orthogonality errors as well. And that's taken into, or that's uh, corrected for in that scale factor matrix. So yeah, that is the calibration model we're going to use to correct our accelerometer measurements. All right, let's get into the actual calibration procedure. So first what we're going to do is we're going to record raw accelerometer measurements at a bunch of different orientations while keeping the sensor stationary. Stationary is really important. Um, then we're going to log those measurements to a tab delimited text file. And then finally, we're going to use a piece of software called Magneto to compute those nine calibration parameters. Uh, so let me show you the little setup I got down here to uh, record accelerometer measurements. This is the microengineering ultra precision accelerometer calibration test stand here, you know, tape and grippy cutting board ultra precision. <laughs> Anyways, so what I did is I started off with the accelerometer flat on the floor, recorded a measurement, then I propped it up with this guy, I held it still, recorded a measurement, and then I used these tape markers I have on the floor to uh, prop it up against the um, end table here, and then just held it still, recorded the measurement, propped it up one more tape mark, held it still, recorded a measurement, and then I did that for all of the tape markings here. And you know, then after that, flipped it around to a different orientation. Again, start, started with a flat, recorded a measurement, propped it up, measurement on the tape markers, held it still, measurement, and so on. And I did that for all orientations of the accelerometer. And it's very important when you take a measurement that the accelerometer is completely still. You know, you can't do this while holding it in your hand because your, uh, like the vibrations and your hand shaking will influence your measurements and completely throw them off. It needs to be completely stationary when you record your data. So let's hop over to the computer and I'll show you the software side of things. All right, so let's start off with the um, sensor driver code, you know, the code actually reading the sensor data. Um, so my flight controller uses a TNC 4.1 as its microcontroller, and the accelerometer I'm using is the FXOS8700. Um, and this code I wrote is um, using the platform IO framework in VS Code, just FYI. Um, so in our setup loop here, you know, we're just initializing our serial connection and the accelerometer sensor. And in the loop here, um, every 20 milliseconds, we read the accelerometer sensor and um, output the you know, data 
store them in variables. Um, the sensor driver code I wrote for the FXOS8700 outputs its um, accelerations in Gs. So, you know, while the sensor is at rest here, it should output a magnitude of 1G, you know, because it's not moving. Um, and then we print our AX, AY, and AZ values to the serial port. You know, pretty simple. And then I wrote some Python code here to read that serial data and actually and log it to a tab delimited text file. Um, so up top here we have some configuration parameters, you know, like output file name, whatnot. Um, so let's check out the main loop here. So you know we initialize a serial um, object and a list to store all of our accelerometer measurements. So when we run this code, it's going to say, okay, type M to take a measurement or Q to um, save the values to a file and quit. So if we type in M, what we're going to do is record some data and print it out just so we know what happened and add that to our data array. So let's check out this uh, record data point uh, function here. So what we do, so every time the code um, records a measurement um, or outputs a measurement it actually takes the average of like 25 readings so that's what this is right here so you know we take um, take 25 readings compute and uh, you know output the average you know pretty simple uh, so that's what that does right there and you know once it's done we just save it to a file so let me show you this code running here so if you do Python um, record data so it's gonna say, okay, keep it flat on the desk, whatever. Okay, so I have my accelerometer flat on the floor here. So we're gonna type M. It's gonna average the measurements and um, save up to the data rate. And now I'm going to move it at a different inclination. And again, do M. It's gonna record the data, compute the average, and there you go. And you know, you just do this for as many times as you want uh, for all your different orientations. Um, so as you can see, the magnitude of our measurements you know, at rest is not 1, it's 1.02, which means our, our accelerometer needs calibration. That should be 1, not 1.02. Um, so when I, act when I did this for my accelerometer, I did it a lot of times. I ended up recording, let's see, 178 data points. Yes, that took a lot of time. <laughs> Um, but luckily you only need to do this calibration procedure once you know you don't have to do this every time before you fly um, you just need to do this once um, so this is what my data file looks like after I did it um, recorded the accelerometer readings at a bunch of different orientations so after you logged all of your accelerometer measurements to a tab delimited text file we're going to use a software called magneto to determine our calibration parameters um, I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can download the Magneto software for yourself. Um, just know I did not develop this, but it's a really, really awesome piece of software. So when you open Magneto, this is what it looks like. It's going to ask for a norm of the magnetic or gravitational field and your raw measurements file. Um, since my accelerometer measurements were um, output in Gs, we should ideally only have a magnitude or norm of 1G. So. I'll just do one right there and then we will browse for that tab delimited text file which I just have right there then I just click calibrate ba bam <laughs> oh there are calibration coefficients how easy was that <laughs> I mean I'm so happy this to make needle software exists it works really really well so as you can see we have our bias corrections vector right here and our scale factor correction matrix right here perfect um, so then I wrote another Python code here to um, plot the calibrated versus uncalibrated measurements so what I did is I copied over these values right here to these um, numpy arrays and then you know I just made a bunch of plots of the calibrated and uncalibrated data so let's take a look at what that looks like let's quit that and plot. Boom. All right. So we get our um, ellipse right here. You know, you can see looks kind of cool. Um, but here's the real, here's what we're really interested in. 
So here are the calibrated and uncalibrated measurements. So let's take a look at this XY plot right here. So as you can see, the blue is our raw measurements and the red are the calibrated measurements. And so you can see they don't, the calibrated and uncalibrated don't match up. Um, the uncalibrated extends uh, beyond 1G over here and over here quite a bit. And as you can see, the center of this uh, cross shape is not at the origin. It should be at the origin, but it's not. But as you can see, the calibrated measurements have an exact magnitude of, uh, or maximum magnitude, sorry, of 1G, which is perfect. Looks like a nice clean uh, circle. And its origin is right at 0, 0. That's perfect. This is a visualization that our calibration actually worked. Um, it's great. And then it's the same for the XZ axis um, plot right here and the uh, YZ axis plot. So yeah, that is the um, general accelerometer calibration procedure I came up with. And as you can see in these plots, it works really, really well. And so this is the exact calibration procedure I'm going to use for my um, quadcopter flight controller. Um, and I'm sure you guys will find this useful for your projects as well. Uh, this is probably a little bit confusing, um, so feel free to comment down below any questions you have, and I will try my best to answer them. So yeah, until the next video, see you later, guys.